Hey everybody, welcome back for another Make and Tell Tuesday. Today we're going to create a bouquet of Botanicut's roses in our Just Mason Around jar. We're going to color the roses with some simple ink blending and then finish it off with a watercolor background. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and we're gonna start on the roses. So I have all of my pieces already cut using the Botanicuts rose die and I have cut them from just a nice heavyweight white cardstock. This is 110 pound Nina cardstock. And so I have pulled out a variety of pinks and reds and kind of purple shades of Distress Oxide inks. So we're going to use lots of ink colors to get a really nice variation of color between the different layers of the rose. I'm going to start off with the bottom layer of the rose and I'm probably going to use some of the lighter pink and we'll work towards um, darker shades as we get towards the center of the flower. So I'm just using these little finger sponges and I have a small piece of a Cricut mat which was is actually uh, designed for using of course with the Cricut cutting machines. It's sticky. I like to use these um, in my Misty um, to hold my uh, die cuts in place while I'm stamping and I also like to use them, little scraps that are left from doing that. Um, to hold little die cuts when I'm sponging and adding color to, to different die cut shapes. All right, so we're gonna start with that and you don't have to worry too much about what happens in the center of the flower. Um, that really doesn't show except for if you pop your, your petals out, some of that kind of might peek out, but for the most part, you're not gonna see what's in the center. You're more concerned about what's around the outer edge. So I'm gonna move on to the second layer and we're going to make this layer a little more um, pinky purple. So we're gonna use some picked raspberry to start off. Just a really pretty, really vibrant, almost neon-y pink. And then I'm going to move on to the next layer. And this one, we're gonna go deep in color as well. I'm gonna start with the seedless preserves. I'm going to add in some aged mahogany, just kind of a reddish brown. And then I think I'll also add in some of this picked raspberry. And these petals will get popped up when we assemble everything. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to work on this center part and we'll make the tip of that nice and dark but then we'll allow a little more lightness in some of these other areas. All right, and then we have the little center point and again we're gonna go pretty nice and dark on that all right then we have these little bits which are really kind of meant to look like the petals are kind of curling around and I want to keep those a little bit lighter so I'm going to use my worn lipstick. It's almost like those curled over petals are going to catch the light a little bit. And so keep them a little lighter. Although I'm going to make them add a little more color down here at the tip. Okay, 
and the same thing for this little part that goes way in the center of the rose. So all of our pieces are colored and we can go ahead and assemble it. So there's our pretty rose with lots of variation in color. I'm going to make a second rose. This one I'm going to make more um, tones of red versus the more purple and pink of this one. And we're going to go for more of a red. And I'm going to create a smaller flower by omitting the bottom two layers of this rose. So we're going to just use this layer and then that center part. Alright, so there we have our two little roses, which are really perfect size that we can add to our Just Mason Around jar. And so, like I said, I have one of the smaller roses from the set, and then I created an even smaller one by omitting those two layers, and that turns out really cute as well. So we're going to add a bunch of leaves from the Botanicuts rose set as well. And so we're going to ink those up with all different shades of greens and blues to get a really nice variety of color. And so I have pulled out just a whole bunch of Distress Oxide colors, ranging from really yellowy green in this crushed olive, all the way to just really bluey greens and even some blues. And so it's really fun just to mix a lot of colors and get a lot of variation in your leaves. So I'm not gonna be really using any special techniques, just sponging on that ink and blending in those colors. So I'm actually going to start with some faded jeans. And I'll kind of add some of that along the bottom edge of that larger leaf on that pair of leaves. And then I'm going to take some peeled paint and sponge the rest of the leaf. You can see how that blue just turns to a really kind of pretty deep olive-y um, shade after you sponge the green over the top. You can also sort of really bring that to life by sponging some more of a teal, teal blue. This is a peacock feathers. And so I'm going to take just a little bit of that Add that in as well, and then it needs a little blending. So I'll go back with my peeled paint green. Just kind of blend that out a little bit. So there we have some really pretty blending, shading colors going on in there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all of these leaves using kind of that same process and just working in a lot of different shades and a lot of different colors. So we have our pretty roses and jar all finished and ready to put onto a card. And I thought a background with some watercolor would be uh, really fun to go behind that. And so we're going to create that. I have a panel of watercolor paper here. This is just Master's Touch, uh, the Hobby Lobby brand watercolor paper, which I like because it has a really pretty texture and it's a really nice and white color. It's great for simple things like just blobby kind of watercolor backgrounds. I wouldn't recommend it for any serious um, watercoloring like uh, detail work where you want to add layers and blending and that sort of thing but it's great for cards for backgrounds so I have that all ready to go and I have heat embossed one of the script sentiments from our new pretty postmark set I have that heat embossed with white powder already onto this panel and so we're gonna add some color I'm gonna start with just some water and I have a mop brush here. This is a silver 
mop brush. Or, I'm sorry, it's a Raphael mop brush. And so I'll just go start by adding some water. And I want to make this kind of a pretty shades of blue. My palette is very dirty and messy, but there's a lot of pretty colors going on in here. And so I'm just going to use kind of what's already here in my palette. So I'm just going to kind of loosely add that. And you can see here I'm going over top of that embossing and that's bringing that out. You can drop in some other shades of color. Drop in a little green. And that's really all there is to it. I'm going to let that dry and call it good. So I have added our flowers and leaves and jar to my watercolor background. I also added a little thank you sentiment, which is also from the pretty postmark set that the text background came from. And I also added a few splatters to finish it off. And so I'll add this to a card base and our card is finished. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this Make and Tell Tuesday that shows how to add some color to our Botanicuts rose dyes using ink blending.